Hi, I'm Lori Getty. I've been a master gardener for six years now. Before moving to Genesee County, I had a 25 by 50 foot garden, vegetable garden in my backyard. I did a lot of canning back then. I now have three raised beds and I also garden in pots, which is really different. But since the COVID-19 pandemic is coming, has come, the gardening interest has increased. So today I'm just gonna talk about very basic gardening. For many of you, this is your first or second year of having a garden. There's many benefits of having a garden and growing your own food. I forgot to flip the stairs. There's many, many benefits of growing your own food. Where it's a project for the whole family. Food from the garden is fresher and it has more flavor. It is less expensive than purchasing in the store or at the market. And it, re it reduces your food waste by eating as it comes to ripe and preserving as you harvest. It improves your health by in controlling what you are eating. You have control over what chemicals you are using in your garden. So you know what there is in their food. So you really know that your food is safe. You are very proud when you are sitting at your kitchen table knowing you are eating food that you have, put, have grown yourself. One of the first things you need to know is your climate zone. The USDA has taken a map of the United States and divided the it into 11 zones. Then they're all in 10 degree zones. Then they further divide it into five degree zones, which is climate A and B. Zone one is the coldest zone and zone 11 is the warmest. Here's the map of New York State. You will notice that Rochester is right on the Great Lakes. Right here is Genesee County. And mm -hmm. Genesee County is half in the green and half in the blue. But the Great Lakes being so close, it moderates our weather. It moderates our weather and um, it keeps us warmer in the fall and cooler in the spring. We can easily have a late frost or an early frost. Last year, we had a hard frost in September. The further you are from the lake, the less the lake affects your gardening. When you search on the internet, Batavia is five, zone 5B, five minimum average temperature of 15, minus 15 to minus 10 degrees. It says the average frost-free growing days is May 12th to end of September 30th. Well, this is just an estimate. And you do not, you cannot believe everything you see on the internet. Due to the Great Lakes being so close to us, the weather is very unpredictable. These are average temperatures and average frost dates. We recommend planning in Batavia at is Memorial Weekend so that you're safe. If you have questions about when to start planting your garden, call your local cooperative extension and they'll let you know. You'll need some tools when you start gardening. Buy the best tools that you can. You'll need a shovel to dig up the ground, and you'll need a trowel to, uh, to dig holes for your transplants and breaking soil up around their plants, a rake to prepare the seed beds and break up large clots of soil, a water source, keep it really close. You don't wanna be dragging heavy hoses to a fire garden. You may want a rain gauge 
It's, it could be just a small can, like a tuna can, so you know how much rain came down when it rained. You need some sticks and some ruler and some string to mark your rows when you are planting your garden. It's really nice to have garden gloves, a kneeling pad, and a garden fork. A soaker hose is a good investment, but when you water your garden, you'll be watering just the roots of your plants. A sprinkler, a watering can, a wheelbarrow and wagon are also very helpful. Another thing you may want is a rototiller. Plan your garden. When you plan your garden, make sure you use a journal. A journal, you can write your ideas and down as you go through your books. You can use any, can be any kind of a book, loose leaf paper, it can be a bound notebook, a spiral notebook. It could be anything. Just put your ideas down, put your garden plans down and you'll be able to look back at them. You must start with a plan. The plan will save you time, energy, and money. By using a journal, you can look back as you go with the ideas that you have with you. And you can see the improvements you made from year to year when your garden. When you are planning your garden, you need to know how much room you have. Decide what you want to plant. Plant what your family will eat. Plant veggies that are expensive to buy and yet easy to grow. This is a good time to choose a vegetable that one of your children won't like, and they can watch it grow and perhaps they'll eat it when it matures. Choose vegetables that will mature within the growing degree days. Currently, you should be looking at seed catalogs Asking and asking your friends what they grow. With the number of people in taking an interest in gardening now, many seed companies are running out of varieties of seeds to sell. Where you plant your garden. The ideas are endless. There's red beds there's within a flower bed on your ports, in pots throughout your yard, in buckets, bags of soil. Just make sure there is holes in the bottom of the container so that the water will drain out. And you need enough space for all the roots to grow. We'll be having a, pro a program on raised beds in May, on May 6 at noon. And you're all invited to come join us. It's a free program from 12 to 12.30. Some vegetables that are easy to grow, are tomatoes and peppers, beans, zucchini, squash, lettuces, and radishes. It's easiest to grow vegetables as direct seed in the ground. Tomatoes and peppers are slow growing. It is easier to buy the plants. If you want to start them by seed, we have to check the seed package to see when you have to start planting them indoors. find the right place. If weeds grow in the area, if there are a lot of weeds, it will be difficult to grow a garden in there for it's hard to get the perennial weeds out of the area. If it's a bare spot in your yard, you will probably be not be able to grow a garden there. You have to grow away from tree roots and that are near the surface. Keep it away from pine trees or bushes. Black walnut trees, are not good for your plants. So keep your garden away from your black walnut trees. For the right place, you need to be near a water supply. You don't wanna be carrying and lugging those heavy hoses. Consider the drainage in the area. 
or if it floods, it's not a good spot. The garden will be overwatered, you causing root spots and root rot in all your plants. You remember your trees right now, you can see a lot of sun come down onto your yard where you wouldn't see it in the summertime because there's leaves on the maple trees and the trees you have around. So when you look around your yard, remember about the shade that you say in the summertime. I'm gonna send a link at the end of the program with the site assessment PDF. It will, it will help you decide on the site to place your garden. You wanna start your garden, you want a small garden. The larger the garden needs is, the longer it takes to tend it. And it's really hard to estimate how long you're gonna be working in your garden. It's really easy for the garden to get ahead of you. A raised bed and pots need more water than a garden that's in the ground. And a four by four square foot four by four bed, which is 16 square foot, will grow many, many vegetables. And a 10 by 10, 100 square foot garden is large enough to grow the vegetables for a family of four. My first garden was a three by six. I added to it each year and I ended with a 25 foot by 50 foot garden. It was many years of just adding a little more and a little more and a little more before I had that big garden. When I moved to Genesee County, my lot did not have good soil. I started with one raised four by four bed, and now I have three four by four beds and, more, and several pots where I grow my gardens. Please do not dig soil when it is cold and wet. That will lead to soil compaction. The soil sticks to your, sho your shoes or your shovel. It is too wet to work. You can quick check by picking up a half cup of soil in your hand, squeeze the soil together, and it will form a ball. Place the ball in, on, with your fingers, and if the ball breaks apart, the soil is dry enough to start working. If the ball holds together and holds its shape, it is still too wet. You may want to test the pH of your soil. It should be about six, six to seven for the plant's ability to absorb the nutrients. Most cooperative extensions do check the pH for you for nominal free. Okay. You need to remove the vegetation. Start as early as possible. Remove the many perennial weeds as you can. Shovel off and scrape grass off one inch below the grass roots off the top. Be sure the roots of any perennial weeds in your garden are removed. You can use the pieces of grass to, re to repair bare spots that are in your lawn or start a compost pile. Another way is to cover your area with cardboard or five layers of newspaper and cover it with water. Now, this is called lasagna gardening. We'll be having a free garden talk program on lasagna gardening on April 1st. You are all welcome to join us. Be sure to loosen your soil about 12 inches down by digging or tilling. Do not over till. Soil can become loosened and it, too loose and it will lose its structure. We need some structure. We do not want our soil to look like flour. Use a rake to remove all the roots and the rocks and stones that come up when you're turning the soil over. You'll be amazed of how many there are. 
Each year, more rocks and stones will come up to the surface as you rake. Usually the rocks and stones are not from your neighbor's children. When you get your seeds, there'll be a lot of information on the back of your seed package. I did not have a vegetable seed pack package in the picture. I used a sunflower seed package. But there's still the same amount of information. You'll notice that the seed package for, was packaged for 2008. That is the reason it was packed for, and that's when it was guaranteed to um, to grow. You put it in the ground, it tells you how, the, how many days it takes before it flowers. I don't know why my computer keeps doing that. It will tell you how big the plant is getting the spacing that you need and whether what type of uh, sun it needs to fill, to grow. It's very important to know the spacing needed for a vegetable garden. You don't want to plant your vegetables too close. They're very nice, tiny tomato plants. You don't want them too close together. When you buy seeds, you don't need to plant the entire package. Such as zucchini, you need only two or three plants. Place the remaining seeds in an airtight container and store them in a dark place. I have my leftover seeds in a canning jar inside a brown bag. They'll be, they're not as viable as they are as first when you first buy them, but you can still plant them. If you're gonna buy plants, buy them from a reliable nursery. Check them over well. Do not buy plants that have spots or insects or leaves on that looks like flowers. The first garden, it's best to start with seedlings for tomatoes and peppers for their very hard, very slow growing. When you drexel seeds, the small ones like radishes, place the seeds into an unused salt shaker and then, and then sprinkle the, the seeds in the area of the row that you want to plant them. When they start coming up, you can send them to the proper distance apart. You notice on the picture we're showing the leaf with that black spot powdery on there, that is actually late blight. So back down. Where to plant what? Check your seed packages or to plant tag to know how much room your plant needs. How far apart the plants have to be and how long before they mature. The chemistry of the plant must be close to each other, but not touching, for you want the ground underneath to be shaded to prevent some weeds from growing. Airflow around the plant is very important. It's necessary to prevent uh, disease and viruses. You do not want bare ground around the plant, so use mulch and keep the soil moist. Help, this helps prevent Mother Nature from planting weeds in your garden. Use organic material, such as compost and fertilizers, as much as possible. When planting, plant in the right place, the sun and shade. You know what your plant's supposed to look like, so you won't pull it as a weed. And you also know if there's something wrong with it right away. If you see something wrong, bring and you can't figure it out, bring the problem to your local cooperative extension and they'll let you know the best way to fix it. 
You have to make sure air gets around your plants. And the soil is always evenly moist. If you see that your plants are wilting, it is important for you to, to water your garden at that time. And it's really important to keep your garden free from weeds to prevent disease and viruses. The weeds will also take up the nutrients that the vegetables need. You need to tend to your garden daily. You have to sc scout for diseases and pets. You have to make sure it has enough water. And then when it's harvest time, it is fun. You can just see all the hard work that you've done. To check if the garden needs water, put your finger past the mulch into the soil about one inch. If it is dry, you'll need to water about one inch down past the mulch to, water, to nourish your plants. If you see your plants drooping, water them. When it comes to harvesting, you want to go to your garden each day to pick up your treasures. All bugs are insects. Not all insects are bugs. Many of the insects you see in your garden are pollinators. Some are taking care of any bad insects you may have in your garden. It is estimated that there are over a million of these kinds of insects, of all kinds of insects in the United States, but less than 1% are harmful to your plants. So if you see an insect in your garden, contact your local extension office for an ID before spraying them. Even some bad bugs are not going to kill your entire garden. Things to remember. Use your journal. Put the name of your plant and variety they're using. Write down when you plant them. Put your garden map in so next year you can look and you can remember where you put your peppers and tomatoes and how well they did in those areas. Remember, we always learn from our mistakes. Mistakes happen all the time. Read your journal before the garden season starts next year. And throughout the year, put ideas within your journal so you can see the different ideas that you have coming up for the next year. Are there any questions? Jessica asked, what mulch do you use in your vegetable garden, Lori? Somebody did mention straw, clean straw. Straw would be very good, shredded paper. Um, even the bag mulch that you get from the stores. Well, I don't usually use wood mulch in a vegetable garden unless you're doing like oh, raised beds good. with paths or something. Yeah, um, I think people use newspaper to put down around their plants. Um, so the canopy has filled in. I know if you don't treat your lawn with any herbicides or pesticides, people do take grass seeds and they would grass seeds. You have to let them dry before you put them in your vegetable garden. Some people use the black plastic, which isn't really sustainable, but it is one way. And I'd say if you're doing raised beds, you probably don't need to put a mulch down, but you could use some newspaper or something around. Yeah, I use some shredded newspaper in my shredded newspaper. Okay. In my raised bed. All right. So Mary's asking, she would like to plant a garden in her backyard, but when it rains, there's a lot of water out there. So Mary, it depends if this is a spring problem or a year-round problem and what type of soil you have. So we would have to get some more information. If you have flooding every time it rains, that's probably not a good spot. If it's a wet spot in the spring and then it dries out for the rest of the season, 
it's a possibility. Um, you might want to do raised beds there instead of just um, climbing in the, in the ground. But that would be a question where we would need more information to follow up with you. Um, if you're not sure what your soil type is, folks, there's a good website out there. It's called Web Soil Survey. You can put your address in and then you can actually check out your soil type. All right, so Brittany's struggling with powdery mildew. Um, Justin, Lori. Powdery mildew, oh goodness. Powdery mildew on what type of plant, Brittany? Sometimes powdery mildew, like if it's on lilac or a perennial, you'll see it every year. So good garden cleanup is one thing because it does overwinter on plant material. Um, powdery mildew, of course, one of the things with powdery mildew is, oh, cucumber and squash. Okay, so powdery mildew, you wanna look for varieties of cucumber and squash that are resistant to powdery mildew and also downy mildew. So those two can look like each other. Um, the downy mildew can be fatal, especially in cucumbers. Powdery mildew usually won't kill a plant, but it can cut down your production. So good garden cleanup, Look for varieties that are resistant to those things. Um, airflow, full sun, don't water towards the evening because you don't want the plant material wet. That actually allows the fungus to germinate on the plant. Um, <laughs> tell you what, Brittany, I'll look up some resources on cucumber and squash and we'll send it out when we do the link when we send out the link, because there's probably some things that are specific to cucumber and squash. Um, other questions, folks? This was kind of a very basic overview. We know there's a lot of people that are just getting into gardening. So we wanted to just do a basic, what you need to do. Um, so if anybody has a question, they want to unmute and ask it, now's a good time. We, we've got plenty of time left. One new message. All right, Christina is new to gardening. Great, welcome. Yeah, so we'll be doing um, the garden talks right now are the first Thursday of the month. And again, use our helpline. We have master gardeners in here, even through the winter. You can call them, you can email them, you can pick their brain if you're new to something or if you had a problem last year that you're not sure how to deal with it, like your powdery mildew issue. And what we'll do is um, we are recording this. And next week when we get it loaded up to our YouTube page, I'll send out a link to everyone that registered. And we'll, um, Lori's got a resource list that she's put together of other sites that you can look for gardening information. We'll send out the site assessment PDF and I will take a look. Oh, somebody's got deer. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but if you've got a vegetable garden and deer, honestly, I think your best course of action is to try to fence it. Um, you can try a lot of the deterrents, but they'll get used to stuff. And if they decide that they're hungry, they're gonna munch on your food. And I'm probably getting echoey here. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Gentleman recommended moving some of the zucchini leaves to help reduce the powdery mildew and improve pollination. All right, that's not, not something I've seen, but if that worked for him, um, removing leaves, I, it, you would probably wanna remove leaves that are becoming um, infested with the powdery mildew to help cut down the infestation rate. But if you're moving, removing leaves from the plant, you're actually reducing its ability to um, photosynthesize. So we, I think we'll do some work on the powdery mildew issue and send out a link to everybody. All right, Lori, how do we, how do you pick a spot for things like strawberry and rhubarb? So perennial fruits and vegetables. Well, perennials, you have to, I would dig down to uh, like two feet 
and put a lot of uh, compost and fertilizer in that area because those plants are going to stay there for years. And then plant your rhubarb and uh, horseradish and your other perennials according to directions. And they should be uh, checked for fertilizer if they need it, their pH if they need it. But they should grow pretty nicely. And probably the second year you can start harvesting, the third year for sure. Yeah, so with perennial fruits and vegetables, um, the majority of them are going to want a full sun spot. So full sun, six to eight hours, eight to 10 would, might even be better. Um, you're going to want to avoid low spots, wet spots, especially in the winter, because strawberries and rhubarb are both prone to root rot. So you are going to want to make sure you've got a well-drained spot. Strawberries will do well in a raised bed. Um, and then um, cultural care. Strawberries probably will want to be mulched with straw over the winter. Um, but yeah, if you're investing in long term, you're, you're basically going to want to go with full sun, soils that are well drained, and you don't have any um, flooding, especially in the winter. Winter, wet, win wet winter soil is probably a death knell for a lot of the fruits. Any types of plants you can grow to deter the deer from helping themselves in your garden? Um... I'm thinking nasturtiums, but they're, they tend not to like things that have scents. Some of the herbs, they usually won't grow herbs. I mean, they won't eat herbs. They don't like garlic. They usually don't go after tomato plants, but I think they might try to eat the fruit. Um, so herbs are probably something that they won't, they might taste it, but they usually don't like um, anything that's got a heavy scent or that's herbal. So that is one thing. Most veggies though, I think are fair game. Anything, let me just check and see if we got anything else. Veggies, what veggies to grow to get maximum from short summers in this area? Lettuces. Yeah, I think uh, our cool season plants that you can start early in the season, like peas, um, lettuce, radishes, um, using plant starts, you know, buying transplants. Um, peppers and tomatoes really like the heat, so waiting until your soil is warmed up before you, before you put them in the ground so that they don't get set back. And then you can also extend into the cool season of fall with some um, second plantings of less lettuces, radishes, kale, those types of things. So look for those cool season plants and um, you can do those spring and fall and kind of get a double, double crop out of them. Just checking. I'm not on mute. I also have a lot Sorry, of- are you on mute? Somebody's. Beans. I use um, provider push, bush beans and they seem to grow quite well and are quite tasty. Just checking, I'm not on mute. Swiss chard and beets are also- Sorry, you're on mute. Okay, you are on mute. All right, so I don't know if they heard you. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I forgot we muted Lori. So Brittany planted radish for the first time and they went to flower very quickly. Uh, so they bolted. So did you plant them later in the season, Brittany? I know they like cooler, cooler temperatures. 
sometimes those plants will bolt if the temperatures actually go hot and cold quit between when you know if it if it gets too warm early in the season like last year we had that warm memorial day i think so that could have been one reason um lots of times when things bolt before they're supposed to it's environmental so it's either evenings were warm or daytimes were too warm or things got warm faster than normal um and if anybody's got lettuce seeds right now, you can actually do container gardens with lettuce. I've actually grown lettuce in a bowl since it's shallow rooted. That's a great one to do in a container if you just have a deck space or balcony or um, you know, you're short on, on land. Uh, when do you typically get your transplanted veggies in the soil? So it depends on where you live, Jessica. Um, Lori did have on there, you can look for your online, you can search for growing degree days for your area. Um, you wanna look at your last frost date. And in, depending on what zone you're in in Genesee County, we still kind of go by shooting for Memorial Day for transplants, especially for those warm season crops like tomatoes and vegetables. You want your soil to be warmed up and um, some of your cool season crops, your broccoli and um, color, eh, is color flower cool season. Yeah, so tomatoes, peppers, generally you want to make sure the, um, your past, your last frost date and the soil has warmed up. I'm gonna end the program now and- Thank you everyone.